One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. What's the biggest mistake that you made starting your podcast that you wish you would have known and you wouldn't have done? This is the question that we're covering today because I did a recent YouTube video on this and the reaction was just so good. And I thought, you know, this this really has to be a podcast. So I'm turning it into a podcast and we're going to talk all about these mistakes. So let's get right to it. Welcome to The Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of podcasting, think of this show as the time-saving shortcut you've been looking for. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, so like I said in the intro, I did a YouTube video that was based off of a question I saw in a podcast like question thread. And somebody asked, I did not originally ask this question, which I try to, you know, I'll ask insightful questions from time to time in different communities. And we've talked all about, if you didn't listen to the last, um, the last podcast episode was all about you know, promoting your podcast and social media groups. So um, y'all know I spend a lot of time in Facebook groups and online, like in general, just in different communities about podcasting because I'm constantly trying to learn. But somebody else asked this question and it, it was, what is the biggest mistake you made in starting your podcast that you wish you would have known? And Oh my gosh, it was so golden. So I am sharing some of my mistakes as well as what others shared because it was just too good, you guys. I was just like, oh my gosh, yes. Because some of these things, I've forgotten. We're on episode 145 of this podcast. Like episode one for me feels like it was centuries ago. But whenever some of these people said this, I was like, oh my gosh, I totally did that too. So if you're just starting, these are some of the things 
that I want you to look out for. And if you've been podcasting for a while, then you know, you know, you're just going to nod along and say, yep, I did that too, because there's some mistakes that some of it, like we just all do. There are some things that happen as a brand new podcaster that even if I tell you about them, you're still probably going to do them. So I'm just, I'm just going to let you know that that's the theme that we're sticking with today. So the first one, somebody said they were totally oblivious to how long it takes to get connected to all of the platforms. Now, I think that ignorance is bliss sometimes, right? Because we go into the idea of podcasting with awesome intentions, right? Like maybe some of you are listening and you're like, I just want to start a podcast to share my amazing message to help people in my community or, you know, just help someone else have a better life, save time, save money, save their marriage, be a better parent. Like there's so many awesome reasons that y'all are starting podcasts, but you don't understand the actual logistics of how everything works. And that's not your fault. It's just a matter of not knowing the steps in the process. It's kind of like the first time, uh, so we've moved, my husband and I, collectively together, like as a couple, I think we've counted 11 moves I think we've moved 11 times together, something around, maybe it's eight. I'm thinking of eight because our oldest son, he's about to turn 11. I think he's moved seven times. So maybe it's seven or eight. Maybe I have moved 11 times. I think that's what it is. My husband's moved even, even more than that. But the reason why I bring that up is because we have moved into new homes. We've moved into rental properties. We've moved into apartments. Like we've kind of lived everywhere. But the one thing we have not done is built a house from the ground up, like a custom home from the ground up. And I know a lot of my friends have done this and they will tell you, they will be the first to tell you, don't ever build a custom home. (laughs) <laughs> the reason why I bring that up is because I think that's how a lot of people go into it with the idea. Same thing with a podcast. They're like, but having a custom home sounds amazing. Like I can make the doors how wide I want them to be and I can make columns and I can do the tiered ceiling and I can have the bathroom I've always dreamed of and the pantry and the kitchen and like all these things, right? That on paper sounds amazing. But then you can ask anybody that's a few weeks, a few months into planning their brand new custom home. They look at you with this look of, I had no idea that it was going to be like this, or I had no idea it was going to take this long, or I had no idea there were this many decisions to be made. Like, I am totally in over my head. And I feel like that's how new podcasters are sometimes, right? Like, you see on the surface someone who has a very, very successful podcast, and they make it look easy because they've been doing it for a really long time. So you have this assumption that it's easy. I got this. I can do this. But you underestimate all the back-end logistics stuff. And getting connected to platforms is one of the most common misconceptions, I would have to say. So I totally agree with this. Um, And if you're wondering how long it takes to get connected to platforms, it really just depends. So um, I recently launched the Potty Report, which uh, you've heard me talk about that on here. And that's my my other brand new daily podcast. It comes out with episodes Monday through Friday. And I honestly didn't even know how long it was going to take to get connected because I haven't launched a podcast in two years, right? Like I've had this podcast for a while, so I haven't I hadn't launched a new one, so I didn't, I was kind of like, well, we're going to hit this button and see what happens. And um, it took a little while, like it did. It took at least four to five days for Apple, which was actually really fast. I thought it was going to take longer. I I mean, sometimes it takes seven to 10 days. Sometimes it takes two weeks. Um, I think Spotify was a lot more, uh, it was a lot faster. I want to say it was almost in 24 or 48 hours. And just all the places that you have to do. So 
Bottom line, I agree with this comment that yes, it does take a while, but I want you to understand if you have not launched your podcast, then you need a plan for that. If that, like if you're going into your podcast with a launch plan, you want to launch on a certain date, you need to take into account that you can't just hit publish on your podcast and everything is just out into the world and the exact same time, exact same place, exact same date. Like it's just, it's not how it works. So that's number one. And I feel like I took too long to explain that one. So I won't take as long to explain that one, but I just immediately thought about a custom home and having a podcast. Like it's a great analogy that you have to understand. Like it looks great on the outside, but you got to understand there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Okay, so the second mistake somebody said is not writing down a basic outline. I agree with this. I think that a lot of people just think that they can turn on the microphone and start talking. Um, I try not to do that because I will go on tangents. I will get lost in my train of thought. I will start numbering things and start talking about things and I won't come back to that number (laughs) or I'll just like... You know, if you ever see those where you're, that somebody starts talking about number one is this, and then letter A is this, and then uh, we'll go with gold stars for the next, like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, the list is not converting correctly. So you want to make sure that you have at least a basic outline. This could be something you write on a sticky note. This could be, like, open up the notes tab or the notes uh, document on your computer. I just said notes document. What is it called? Like the little notes app on your computer, the notepad. That's what I was thinking of. The notepad on your computer. It could be the notes app on your phone. Like just have a basic outline of what you're trying to say. That way you don't get lost. You don't have to script out your entire podcast, but I do think you need at least a few bullet points of the main things you want to cover. That way you make sure and you cover all the things that are important But also you stay on topic and you stay on task with what that podcast is supposed to be about. The next mistake somebody said was time management. And I have a few episodes I'm going to link to in the show notes about, um, you know, what a week in the life of a podcast is and how you can podcast in five hours a week. But um, at the end of the day, I think the time management really comes down to what your goals are. And for me, I spend time, a lot more time planning my podcast episodes than anything else. And the reason why is because if you plan, that part makes the recording easier because you're more succinct and you say exactly what you want to say, which makes editing easier because you're not going to be messing up and having to start over or having to cut a bunch of stuff out. And that also makes your marketing because your marketing is just going to be so much easier. If you already have an idea of what you're saying, then you know, like, this is the goal of this podcast. I'm trying to accomplish X. And in order to do that, I need to talk about blah, blah, blah. Like it just makes it a lot easier if you do planning in the beginning. So like I said, I'm going to link to some um, time management information in uh, the show notes for this podcast. So crystalprofit.com slash episode 145. And you'll see uh, all the other resources about stuff I'm going to talk about here today. Okay, so the next uh, mistake that someone mentioned is equipment. And they didn't really understand the difference between the USB and an XLR microphone. And I don't really get too much into tech and equipment on the podcast and even on the YouTube channel. Um, I've explained a little bit more about my own equipment on the YouTube channel, but I don't really go into a lot of comparison only because what works for my budget may not work for someone else's. And what is within my budget may be like way low. Maybe someone wants to spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a podcast studio. And I'm like, that's fantastic, but that's not what I teach. And maybe someone's listening right now and they're like, yeah, I don't even have $100 to spend. I'm like, great, use your phone, right? There's so many options. And that's why I really don't get into a lot of the details behind equipment, but I can explain to you the basics behind the USB versus an XLR microphone. So if you're listening to this and you've been shopping around and wondering which one you should use, for me, it comes down to functionality. So if I were to use an XLR microphone 
for my podcast on a regular basis and I wanted to record on my computer, then I would have to have an XLR microphone, the cable, and a mixer. So you would have to have a mixer to plug in your XLR microphone that would plug into your computer. So I wish I could like, I'm, I'm using my hands like you can see me, but the mixer would have a USB plug that goes into your computer and then your microphone would plug into that mixer and you would speak into your microphone and it's like a whole setup. I do not have a setup like that. I'm speaking into an XLR microphone, but I'm recording on my Tascam recorder. I'm actually not even recording on my Blue Yeti microphone. Now my Blue Yeti is connected directly into my computer, but I've been trying to use more of the dynamic microphones lately because I've had lots of people suggest, people in the podcasting sphere suggest, you know, they just, they really do produce a better sound and they do, they do. But for the purposes of convenience, I use my Blue Yeti a lot because it's already, it's, it's on my boom arm, you guys, like it's, it's connected, it's ready to go. But I've been having to move from room to room because all the kids are home and my husband's been working in the office where my boom arm is with my Blue Yeti. So I have to be flexible. I have to take my Tascam and my XLR microphone and go to the closet (laughs) in my room or go to the guest bedroom and sit on the floor and record in there. I don't know why I sit on the floor. I have, I could sit on the bed in there, but I sit on the floor for some weird reason. Or, you know, just go outside, go somewhere. But I just want you to use whatever equipment is going to work for your podcast, your environment, your space, whatever you're using. But I want you to just understand the basic differences. So again, just to recap all of that, a USB microphone plugs directly into your computer. An XLR microphone needs to be plugged into a mixer before it can be plugged into your computer because it is not a USB. It does not have a jack that goes directly into your computer. It has to plug into something else. So I hope that that makes sense. Please send me a message if it doesn't. Um, But the next mistake that people claim they made was naming their podcast after their self and not the podcast topic. So I can see where this could be a mistake. Um, for me, it's kind of, you know, it's it's weird because I tell people not to name the podcast after their own name, but yet here we are listening to the Profit Podcast, you know, talking about the Profit Podcast, and my name is in the podcast title. Well, I don't think that I'm special by any means, but I do use the name Profit as a play on the word Profit for this podcast. That, that, that's what it is. And I think that if you're going to use your name in your podcast, then you should have either a personal brand Like, you know, if you're a coach, like such and such coach, or um, I'm thinking of the person right now that I can think of that has a show named after herself is the Jasmine Star Show. And she is like a social media coach, consultant. Um, She has services and programs related about social media, but hers doesn't have the name social media. And it's just Jasmine Star because she's made a name for herself. So the Jasmine Star Show is a fantastic name for her podcast because people know who she is. If she was a no one, like no one knew who she was, then people probably wouldn't find it. But she already has almost a celebrity tied to her name. I do not think I have a celebrity like tied to my name. I just wanted to use a play on the word profit and podcast. So that's why my name is in there. So it's really a gray line. And I think it's just subject subjective at the end of the day on whether your name factored into your title really makes sense or not. Like if you tell someone this is the Such and Such podcast and they're not in your industry and they don't understand the title, then I would encourage you to rethink your title because you want someone to understand what it is and what it's about. But 
I don't know. It's it's such a gray area. I just really leave it up to it's subjective to your industry because while you could tell me your name and you may be somebody in your industry, but I don't know who you are, then I would tell you, no, you don't need to do that. But if you are like a industry expert, then yes, use your name. Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. So I hope that was clear as mud, (laughs) right? Like, I didn't really give you a definitive answer, but I did want to talk about it because it is something that comes up a lot. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's kind of subjective. I can't give you like a black and white answer on how it is because it could work for your podcast or it could backfire. I think it just depends on the situation and the specific podcast title that you have. So there we go. Well, we're just going to leave that one a little unanswered. Okay, so the next mistake that I've seen is um, someone said having one or more co-host that you're not 100% confident in the relationship. And whenever I read this, I cringed. I really did. I was just like, ooh, that sounds like like boundary issues is what I think of. And I'll have to link to this in the show notes, but Boundaries by Henry Cloud, if you've never read that book, it's life-changing. It is so good. It changed like my perspective on like my relationships with like my husband, my kids, my mom and dad, like all the people in my life. But having clear boundaries in a podcasting relationship is very important because if you have a host, like a co-host or someone who is helping like produce your show and y'all don't have clear boundaries on like who's doing what part of it, like who's going to be doing the planning, are y'all going to do it together, is someone going to be kind of the face of the show, and then someone's going to do the editing or the behind the scenes, like that needs to be 100% clear, because lacking confidence in your podcast partner is, it's like, it's a losing battle before you even get started. Like you have to be at the same level of motivation and inner energy, like all the things in order to make your podcast work. I started to imagine really bad scenarios of having a co-host. And I've actually had people tell me, I've never had a co-host for, for my podcast. I've had tons of guests. I've never had a co-host. But I've heard some horror stories from the community. So I cannot imagine being super motivated, super positive, like energy, like, yes, like we're going to do this. And here's my plan with the podcast. And here's where, and then someone is just bringing you down in the corner and they're just disagreeing with everything that you say, or they just think your ideas are dumb, or they're just like, no, that's not going to work. Like, no, I want to go this way instead of that way. Like, that would be draining. That would be exhausting to be in that kind of relationship. So if you are thinking about having a co-host or you have a co-host and you're just like, I just don't know if this is going to work, get very clear on what role everybody is going to play. Like that is just my number one suggestion is like be very clear on both of your goals or if you have multiple people, like all of your goals, all of your dreams about this podcast and what you want it to be, because that's going to avoid a lot of really hard conversations that you could have down the road that could possibly damage your relationship. I would just never want that to happen. If you're two friends and then you just just like, I don't want a podcast to be the thing that tears you apart. Oh my gosh, like that just... That breaks my heart to even think about that. Like if I had a best friend, we were doing a podcast, but we just weren't clear on our ideas and then like it, everything just kind of exploded. Oh, um, like that's terrible. I don't want that to happen. So be 100% confident 
in your relationship before you get into a podcast relationship with any kind of co-host. Okay, the next mistake that someone mentioned is they started with XLR microphones and then they weren't really sure that that's the way that they wanted to go because they were like, oh, th- I have to connect that to this. And then I can't really pick this up and take it anywhere. And how do I connect this to my software? And I don't, I don't really know. So back to equipment, make sure that you understand how it all works before you purchase a bunch of stuff. Like if you know, well, I'm going to have to take my laptop and my computer into my closet all the time. So maybe you want to get a USB and not an XLR that has to have additional, you know, gadgets, gadgets and gizmos aplenty that you have to have connected. So that's like my other tip about just understand your equipment before you make any big purchases. Okay, we just have a few more. Hang in here with me because we got some big mistakes we really need to talk about. The next mistake I want to talk about is not having backstock. So somebody said, I wish I would have had at least two months of content from the very beginning. And they didn't really elaborate on it, but I'm assuming that they were probably falling into the trap of the learning curve whether it was the learning curve of content or marketing or understanding, you know, like, oh, if I put out three episodes, then that that actually means I don't have 10 episodes. I only have seven for the next few weeks kind of thing. Like just really managing your time and managing all the pieces of the puzzle when you first get started is like, I think it's critical to have at least a month, like your entire first month of your podcast done at least on paper, like have it planned out. This is what we're going to do. This is our plan. And then you don't have to have everything done, recorded, marketing materials, everything uploaded, all of those things. But I think that you should at least have a few months planned out before you ever launch. And the reason is it is a learning curve. If you've never done a podcast before, it's going to take a second to get everything figured out. So this was a great suggestion or it was a great mistake that I'm glad someone shared because I learned this the hard way too. All right, so the next mistake that we saw, again, is related to equipment, but somebody said, I wish I would've had a good mic plus a mic stand. So I have never had a mic stand, like actually, you know, what what you imagine a a singer or someone who's a a music, a a music, a music artist, a musician, same thing, right? So someone who is actually singing or doing like, unless you do those things, you probably don't have a mic stand around your house, right? So if that is appealing to you and that is going to work for your budget and for, your recording setup, then yeah, get a mic stand. I think that that's fantastic. I got the boom arm after I had been podcasting for a year and it makes all the difference. I wish I would have had it at the very beginning because y'all, if if you haven't heard this story before, I had a Minecraft party box from one of the kids' birthday parties and that is what I used for like my standing desk for the first 40, 50 episodes of the podcast because I like to record standing up in a very comfortable position and I would put this box on top of our desk, put my microphone on top of that. That was my mic stand. That was as fancy as as we got in the beginning. And if that's something you're interested in, do it from the beginning. Like as soon as you realize, I think I need something, do it. It's worth it. It's 100% worth it for you to be comfortable recording your podcast. All right, so the last two mistakes that I wanna share with you is bad sound quality, okay, like this is, I've talked about echoes on this podcast before. I have echoes in my office. I'm actually recording in my office right now. It doesn't sound as bad because I am recording on this dynamic microphone, but if you have noises in the background, try to minimize those. Try to record in your closet. Try to record in your car. Try to record somewhere where there's just not as much echo because it will produce a better quality. And then the last mistake is thinking I would immediately get a lot of listeners. <sighs> right? That's not the one that we want to end on, but it's the it's the most real one because I think a lot of people believe going into their podcast that they're just going to put it out into the world and there's good, like if you build it, they will come. 
And I'm no different. I thought I was going to have millions of downloads like in the first, I don't know, few months, right? It's like, it's just a million downloads. How hard could it be? Guys, I still have not reached a million downloads on this podcast, okay? No, nowhere close, not even anywhere near that, okay? So go in to your podcast launch, the first few months of your podcast, even the first year of your podcast, as humble as possible. And be grateful for every single person that's tuning into your podcast, every single one of them, because those numbers that you see in your statistics, the listeners, the downloads, the locations, like where all these people are, those are real people. Those aren't bots. Those aren't just numbers on a screen. Those are real people listening to your message and what you have to say. So don't ever take that for granted. Be grateful for every single person you have listening to your podcast. And on that note, I want to say a big thank you for being here. I know last episode I did like a whole thing. I like got all emotional about, you know, people just listening to this podcast, but it's so true. It's so true because I'm eternally grateful that I get to sit here and talk about something that lights my heart on fire. Fire, being able to give you this information that will hopefully help you get better or avoid mistakes that I've made and other people have made. Like I'm trying to pave a way for you to be able to take a shortcut to make it a little bit easier on yourself or to have bigger results in a shorter amount of time. That is what makes me so excited to see you actually implementing these strategies that you've learned on this podcast and getting results. That is just what, oh my gosh, it lights me up so much. And speaking of that, if you haven't already, join our Facebook group for the Profit Podcast online community. I'm gonna link to it in the show notes, crystalprofit.com slash episode 145. Would you please go there and share a win with us? Like we are posting in there every day, Monday through Friday. We always have something going on in there, great conversations, and I love it when y'all post your wins, you guys. When you post your feedback, you're like, hey, the, like I'm about to launch my podcast. Like, this is what I'm thinking. Like, what do you guys think? And I'll see people posting about, you know, their ideas or this is what I'm looking for. If they're looking for guests, I just see so many awesome things in our Facebook community. And I'm grateful for everybody that's in there. And I would love to have you join us if you haven't already. So again, it's the Profit Podcast online community. And we'd love to have you because we try to have a lot of fun in there. So again, go to crystalprofit.com slash episode 145 to check out the show notes for this podcast episode. And that's all I have for you today. So remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.